Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Chapter 23, Gauss Law, Fundamentals of Physics by Halliday Resnick Walker. Uh, problem number 20. Let me read out the question. Uh, this is about flux and conducting shells. A charged particle is held at the center of two concentric uh, conducting spherical shells. So, we have a charged particle here at the center and these two are conducting spherical shells. Uh, concentric spherical shells. Uh, figure A shows the uh, shows a cross section. Figure B gives the net flux through a Gaussian sphere centered on the uh, on the particle as a function of radius r of the sphere. So what we have in figure B is if we draw a Gaussian surface, Gaussian sphere to be precise, here. Then I draw one more Gaussian sphere here, then I draw one more Gaussian sphere here, then I draw one more Gaussian sphere here, then I draw one more Gaussian sphere here. So these are Gaussian spheres with different radii. Okay, these are Gaussian spheres with different radii. And what happens to the flux through these Gaussian surfaces as you increase the radius of the Gaussian surfaces is given by this graph. Okay, is given by this graph. Now uh, let's have a look at that graph. Now remember these are metallic shells, okay, these are metallic shells and field inside the metal is zero, okay, uh, field is always zero inside the metal, electrostatic field. So here field is zero in this part, here field is zero and here field is zero between the inner surface of A shell A and outer surface of shell A lies the metal, so field is zero, inner uh, surface of shell B and outer surface of shell B field is zero. So if field is zero and we have a Gaussian surface, we have a Gaussian sphere here lying inside this uh, uh, spherical shell, metallic spherical shell. If field is zero, flux is zero. And if we have a Gaussian sphere here inside this metallic sphere B, again field is zero, so uh, flux is also zero. Now that part, if Gaussian sphere, if Gaussian sphere lies inside A, between inner surface of A and outer surface of A. And if Gaussian surface lies, Gaussian sphere lies uh, within B, that is between inner surface of B and outer surface of B, flux is going to be zero. And that part is here in the graph, this part here and this part here. So this part is inside A, inside A, and this part is inside B, inside B. So obviously this part is from the center to the inner part of inner surface of A. This part here is from center to inner surface of A, inner surface of A. Then this part is from inner surface to outer surface of A where flux is zero. Then this part is between outer surface of A and inner surface of B. This part here is between outer surface of A and inner surface of B, inner surface of B. Then this part is uh, within B, from inner surface of B and outer surface of B. Then this part is outside B, okay, this part is outside B. So we have identified different parts of this uh, uh, graph. Now what are we asked to find out, okay, what are we asked to find out? Okay, uh, the scale of the vertical axis is said by phi s is equal to phi into 10 to the power phi newton meter square per coulomb. So phi s here is phi into 10 to the power 5, phi into 10 to the power 5, okay, newton meter square per coulomb, so it is an SI system. What are charge of the uh, central particle and net charges on shell A and shell B? So we have to find out charge of this inner particle here, the particle lying here, and then charge of shell A and charge of shell B. Total charge of shell A and total charge of shell B. We are not asked to find out how the, the charges are distributed on the inner and outer surfaces. We just have to find out total charge of A and total charge of B. So uh, a simple application of Gauss law basically. Now first uh, uh, again at the graph, phi s is equal to 5 into 10 to the power 5. Up to 5s you have 5 divisions, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So each division is 1 into 10 to the power 5, okay, each division is 1 into 10 to the power 5. 
and this one here is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This one is 9 here. So 9 into 10 to the power 5. This one is 4, 4 into 10 to the power 5. And this one here is 2. Okay, this one here is 2. So we'll come to that later on. So first we have to find out charge of this central particle here. Okay, central particle here. So what I'll do is, I'll consider a Gaussian sphere here like this. The Gaussian surface, the Gaussian sphere lies between the particle and inner surface of A. So from the graph, this part uh, uh, is the flux through this uh, uh, Gaussian surface here. Okay, flux is equal 9 into 10 to the power 5. So from the graph, we already know flux through this Gaussian sphere, which we have considered is uh, uh, 9 into 10 to the power 5. Now let's consider Gaussian uh, Gauss law, which is uh, Flux through any closed surface is Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. And flux through this closed surface, Gaussian surface, is 9 into 10 to the power 5. Q enclosed is just the particle. Both these spheres are lying outside this Gaussian sphere. So just the particle there. Okay, just the particle there. So charge of the particle, let's represent that by Q1. Okay, charge of particle will represent by or just by A, by Q. We'll just represent it by Q. Divided by epsilon 0, which is uh, 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. So flux is an SI system, Newton meter square per coulomb, and then epsilon 0 is an SI system, 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. So what we'll get charge will be also an SI system, meaning in coulombs. So this implies Q is equal to 9 into 10 to the power 5 into 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12. This implies Q is equal to, Q is, uh, now I have already calculated it. Oh, one thing I missed. This flux is negative. This flux is negative. Okay. This flux is negative here. So this is uh, minus 9 into 10 to the power uh, 5. So we have this minus sign here, we have this minus sign here, okay. So Q comes out to be minus 7.97, 7.97 into 10 to the power minus 6, 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs. This is charge of the particle, which is approximately minus 8 into 10 to the power minus 6, minus 8 micro coulombs basically. So this is approximately minus 8 micro coulomb. So this is charge of the central particle. Now we have to find out charge of the uh, uh, metallic sphere, spherical shell A, then metallic spherical shell B. So let's move on now. Okay, so now part B, we have to find out charge of shell A, spherical shell A. So what we'll do is, we'll consider a Gaussian sphere here. Now see, Gaussian sphere is lying between A and B, between outer surface of A and inner surface of B. And flux is here. This part belongs to this region. And flux is 4. This one is 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this part is 4 into 10 to the power 5. Newton meter square per coulomb. And charge enclosed by this Gaussian sphere is charge of the particle and charge of A. Okay, charge of the particle which we represented by Q and charge of A. We'll represent that by QA. So again now Gauss law. Flux through a closed surface is Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. So this implies Q enclosed. Q enclosed is charge of particle plus charge of Q. Charge of the particle which we represented by Q plus charge of the shell A, metallic shell A, will represent that by QA is equal to epsilon 0 times the flux. So this implies QA is equal to epsilon 0 times flux minus Q. Epsilon 0 is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 in SI system. Phi is 4. Now this is positive. Okay, this is positive. 4 into 10 to the power 5. So 4 into 10 to the power 5. That's also an SI system. This part. And then we have minus Q. Q we have already found is, uh, I have it here, minus 7.97 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs. Now this, uh, again, I have worked it out. This comes out to be 1.15. So 
so q a is equal to 1.15 into 10 to the power minus 5 coulombs minus 5 coulombs 1.15 into 10 to the power minus 5 coulombs so simple application of uh, uh, gauss law then we had find out uh, charge of b okay so we had find out charge of b now so we'll do it the same way okay we'll do it the same way we'll consider a gaussian sphere here now this gaussian sphere is lying outside b and flux through that part is here this part and that is uh, minus 2 1 2 minus 2 into 10 to the power 5 minus 2 into 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 5 newton meter square per coulomb in SI system and charge enclosed by this Gaussian sphere is charge of the particle charge of A and charge of B okay so again let's use Gauss law flux through any closed surface is Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0 so Q enclosed is charge of particle Q plus charge of metallic sphere A spherical shell A then plus charge of B charge of B is equal epsilon 0 upstairs so epsilon 0 times phi flux through this closed surface which we have considered so this implies QB is equal to epsilon 0 times the flux minus Q minus QA okay. minus Q minus QA now epsilon 0 is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 in SI system phi is uh, 2 in minus 2 minus 2 into 10 to the power 5 so this is this part then minus q which we have already found charge of the particle minus 7.97 into 10 to the power minus 6 then minus q a charge of a which we have again found out earlier 1.15 into 10 to the power minus 5 okay into 10 to the power minus 5 now this i have again worked out already so this is minus 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs this is charge of sphere b okay charge of sphere b now i leave you with something here we have found charge of a and we have found charge of b what i want you to do is find out charge on the inner surface of a and charge on the outer surface of a that is to say how is total charge of shell a distributed on its inner and outer surfaces and how is total charge of b which we have found here is 5 point minus 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs how is it distributed on the inner surface and the outer surface that part i'll leave for you do comment on that part that'll do for this session